Let's talk about how to seed your database using Prisma inside of a Next.js application. Hey everyone, my name is James Quick and I'm a staff developer advocate here at PlanetScale. And I've been working on a, next, a new Next.js starter for you all to enjoy. I'll have a link to that in the description below. And as part of that setup process, I found myself wanting to be able to seed a database, which means it can automatically populate your database with records to make it easier for you to get started to actually work with the database itself. So in this video, I'm gonna show you how to set up a Next.js project that already has Prisma configured to work with and automatically seed a database inside of PlanetScale. Now, a couple of things I wanna talk about uh, before we get into it is why would you want to actually seed a database? And there's kind of two good examples I think that are relevant here. One, let's say you're working on a project and uh, you get on a new project and you clone the code and you run it from uh, your computer locally. Well, you may not have a database that's already populated with information to work with. So maybe you start a local database or you create a new database somewhere, but then you don't have any data. You don't have users, you don't have any records, you have nothing to work with. So it's a great way to populate your database with data so that you can go and get up and running with the project that you're working on as you onboard more quickly. Now, the other benefit of this that actually is really, really beneficial is when you're doing automated testing. So when you do automated testing, uh, whether it's something that uh, you actually trigger yourself or it's something that is part of your CI CD process, you want to make sure that the data in your database is consistent so that you always know what the data is inside of your database and you can be sure that when your tests run you'll get the expected outcome or not and you'll know that your tests have failed because that data is consistent so there's a couple of reasons why you might want to set up seeding for your project let's go ahead and see how to do this with next.js prisma and planet scale all right so i've got open the next.js starter github repository and you'll want to clone this project so i'm going to go and grab this clone url and then we'll bring this uh, down to our local machine. So I'm gonna run a git clone inside of my delete me directory. And then I'll open this up in the uh, same window of VS code that I'm already in. So I'll do code dash R to reuse this window and then next.js starter. All right, so we'll get this up. We'll come and uh, take a look at these files in a second. But the next thing we wanna do is actually create our database inside of PlanetScale. Uh, so you can sign up for a free account. We'll have a link in the description below for you to sign up. Once you do, you'll click on a uh, new database here. You can see I've already got a Next.js starter, but let's do Next.js starter two. You can choose your region. So depending on where you are in the world, you should choose the region that's closest to where you are and then go ahead and create click or click create database. Now, one of the really cool things about planet scale databases is that we have the ability to use branches similar to how you would inside of a GitHub repository. So inside of your database, what's gonna happen is it will automatically create a main branch that you can work with. And with this main branch, we'll need to create a password that we can use to generate a connection string to actually connect to this database. So it's important to know that for your different branches, you can think of them as different databases that each will have their own connections that you will need to create. So my main branch is created. I can see this if I come into my branches tab and then click into main. And what I wanna do is uh, click connect and then uh, generate a new password. Now we have also in here a dropdown for the different types of passwords that you might want to create. There's one here for Prisma, which is what we're going to use. So I'm gonna copy uh, this whole thing. I actually only need the URL part, but I'll copy the whole thing for now. And then I'll come back to uh, the source code and I will uh, copy over, let's copy the .env.example and let's change this to be .env. So this is where we're gonna put our property. Let's give ourselves a little more room here. And then uh, if I paste in that snippet that came from uh, the dashboard, you can see here, this is how we would configure this uh, Prisma configuration to connect to our database. You can see this inside of our schema.prisma file actually, where it's this database source DB property, but in this case, it's looking for an environment variable, which is what we're gonna set. We'll come back to the schema file in a second. So back in the .env, we basically just wanna take this connection string and set that as the database URL property inside of our .env file above. So let's go ahead, you can see I've got the template here, but I can go ahead and paste this in. All right, so there's our new password, which means we should be able to now connect to our database. Now inside of the schema.prisma file, not only do we have the database configuration above, we also then have the two different product, or excuse me, the two different models that we wanna work with, product and category. 
So they have basic information, product has name, description, price, image, and then a reference to the category, which in itself has a name and description property, as well as references to the different products that have or match that category. So with this in place, uh, one thing we didn't do is actually run an NPM install of all of our packages. So we've got the dependencies in our package.json and we'll run the install to go ahead and install those. And then from here, we can do an NPX Prisma push. All right, and before we actually run this command, if we come and look inside of the schema tab for our main branch, you can see that there is no schema, there are no schema changes there. So when we run this MPX Prisma push, it's gonna use that .env uh, Prisma DB push, sorry, MPX Prisma DB push. When we run that command, it's gonna use that environment variable to know how to connect to our database and specifically the database branch. And then it's gonna go ahead and regenerate that schema or create that schema for us. So if we refresh, we can now see that the schema is actually live inside of our planet scale database. We could also come to the console here and do a show tables command and then a describe of product and or category to see the same thing to make sure that schema is updated. Now that it's in place, we're able to actually make a connection to our database from Prisma, which is great. Now we wanna actually go and populate this information inside of our application or inside of our database so that we can work with it inside of our application. So this project, this repository comes with a seed.js file inside of uh, the Prisma directory. I'm gonna delete that so that we can create it from scratch. So you can either delete it or use what's there, but we'll talk about what the different pieces are. So I'm gonna create the seed.js file. And uh, one thing to reference really quickly is we also have a data.js file. This data.js file has a few different sample uh, categories and then products, an array of each one that we can use to, uh, to work with or to insert into our database as we clean these up. And it exports those um, in this module.exports. Notice now that we're using the common JS syntax for doing exports. So instead of the regular import syntax that you would be used to in the rest of your Next.js application, we're gonna have to use the require syntax, which is because we're running outside of the scope of the Next.js application. We're gonna be running the seed script on its own. So inside of the seed script, we'll need to import a few things. We'll need to import the Prisma client and we'll require Notice the use of the require syntax here. We'll require this from prisma.client. And then we'll want to import that sample data. So we want to import the categories and the products. And this is going to come from that data file that we just saw. So we'll get this from the uh, data file there. All right, and then lastly, we'll take our Prisma client and we'll use it to generate a new, new Prisma client. Now with this Prisma client, we'll be able to interact with the different APIs that are available to us with our database. So the next thing is we'll just create a load function here. So this is gonna be an asynchronous function. I like using async await syntax. And then we wanna do some error handling in here. So we'll just kind of stub this out to do a try catch. And uh, if we catch something, uh, we'll just law or error out that error. And then finally, um, if we wanna add the finally clause here, we can say await Prisma dot, and then we can call the uh, dollar sign disconnect. This would just make sure that there's no ongoing connection to our database. At the end of this, we'll just call, call our load function. All right, so that seed function looks pretty good. Now we can start to uh, write a few lines of code in here to actually save stuff to our database. So we can uh, say prisma dot category. All right, notice how it auto populates that for us with the prisma client. So we can do a create mini. And then inside of here, we'll pass an object with a property of categories. All right, so this is going to create all those categories and we can await this. And then just to make sure we see this working, we can say categories are created. All right, and then we'll do the exact same thing for the product. So we'll do Prisma product create mini, pass in our configuration object with a data property that points to the products array. And then we will just log this out. So console log products are created. All right, so we've got the seed script. Now we need to know how to run it. And there's a couple of different ways that we can configure this and we'll make a few additions to this as well. But one of the things that we can do is come into our package.json and add an extra script to be able to run this. So let's go into our package.json. Inside of the scripts tab here, you can see there's already the seed script that's defined. So the key here is seed and then it will run the node prisma cjs command. 
So let's see what happens if we run this. Let's do an npm run seed here and see what happens. Hopefully we'll get a couple of logs saying that those categories and products were created. And then back in the dashboard, if I wanted to run a select star from category, then we should see that we have data in there if we can type the select appropriately. So we've got three rows in our category and then we can do select star from our product as well. And we can see those things coming up. Now, the cool thing is now that this data is actually populated, we can run our npm run dev command. So we can actually start this application up and we can see this data inside of the browser, inside of our application. So you can see there that we've got uh, our products listed out and then the categories are listed out as well. Now there is a little bit of a problem if we were to run the seed command again. So if we ran npm run seed one more time, and then we were to uh, run our dev command, if we run this open again, uh, refresh, we should see now that we have twice as many objects as we want to. So we actually wanna make sure inside of our seed script that before we actually add any data, let's go ahead and delete any existing data that's already there. So we can do this with uh, a similar command, uh, prisma.category.delete many, and then we can pass it in no parameter, so just an empty parameter there. And we can do this for our product as well. So now when we run these, uh, we may do, may do a log here to be sure, uh, deleted categories, and then we can uh, copy and paste that down for our product as well. So deleted categories and product. Now we can run the seed command, npm run seed. It should do basically the exact same thing, but do that delete first. And then if we do our npm run dev, uh, we'll look pretty good, except we'll see one thing doesn't quite match up. So let's go and uh, take a look and refresh this. And we might notice that we've got an error here, uh, property of null for name. And this is actually with the category associated with the different product. So if we look inside of our index.js uh, file, we're doing a static uh, query inside of our get static props. We're doing a, a query to our Prisma products, and then we're including the category. So it's gonna go and grab the associated category and populate that as part of the product data that we get. However, if we look inside of this data, notice that the category ID numbers that we're adding to our products is zero, one, and two, or one, two, and three. But if we uh, come into our uh, planet scale database again, and let's do a select, select star from category again, we'll see that those IDs now are seven, eight, and nine instead of one, two, and three. And that's because it's an auto index or auto incremented index that uh, is stays persistent. So after we do one, two, three, four, five, six, then it's gonna do seven, eight, nine. So the last thing we wanna do inside of our seed script is just make sure that that index gets reset back to one so that our category ID references still make sense. So we can run uh, Prisma dot, and then we can run a uh, query raw. So dollar sign query raw. And then we can pass into these back ticks, uh, just the query that we want to run. So we can say alter table product and say auto increment equals one. And then the exact same thing for our category. So we'll do a uh, category here. So we're, we're passing it some raw SQL that we can run to alter or update this table where we set this auto increment back to one. Now, one small thing we need to tweak here is we need to run this uh, reset for that auto increment after we've already deleted all of the existing records. So we'll just move this down after we've deleted those records and save. And now we can run our NPM run seed again. So that should go ahead and uh, do the uh, delete, update the auto index, and then create those products and categories again. And then we'll run our dev command to see this in action. And we should see so we have the appropriate amount of records as well as those associated categories being displayed. So that's one way that you can configure your seed script to run. There is another way that ties more directly into Prisma itself, where you can have it be part of some of the Prisma commands where it seeds automatically. So what we can do is inside of our package.json, again, we can add a property configuration for Prisma. Uh, and this is going to be a Prisma object, a Prisma configuration object. And inside of that, we can have the seed uh, command, and then we can uh, do the same thing we just did, where we'll call node prisma seed.js. Now this looks almost exactly like what we just had before. The difference is 
Prisma will now recognize the seed command as something that can run automatically. And it will run with two different commands uh, that if you run, it will go and run it with you. So if you run the npx prisma migrate dev command, it will run that. So anytime you're doing a migration with Prisma, if you run that command, it will also run your seed. In addition to that, it will run your seed automatically if you were to run uh, Prisma migrate reset. So if you were to run that command, you would see that it would run your seed script as well. So I personally prefer to just kind of leave this as a seed script that I can decide when I want to run because I don't necessarily want this seed script to run automatically with a migrate but I'll leave that up to you and you can check. I'll have links to the Prisma documentation in the description below for you to refer to and make sure that you make the best decision for yourself. So as a quick wrap up, seeding your database is a great way to make sure that you have the exact same set of data, a consistent set of data for people that are either joining a new project and getting started and getting set up, or you're running your automated tests. And again, you wanna make sure you're running your tests against the same set of data each time. Hopefully that was pretty easy to follow along. Let me know what you thought about that in the comments below. And if you have any additional questions on setting up your database with Prisma, seeding, planet scale, et cetera, make sure to throw those in the comments below. Thanks for checking out the video and we'll catch you next time.